Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi, welcome back. Here we are with Manny Pacheco. How are you doing, John Coleman, my wonderful partner? Um, I'm doing great. Manny, how are you? Well, always happy to be on Celebrating Act 2. There is no question that this is uh, one of my favorite times of the month. Well, we're <laughs> celebrating we're celebrating everybody's act too. Right. Hey, Manny, uh, as you know, I've spent many years uh, doing television and watching some old television shows recently, uh, some old specials, um, brought back the concept, uh, what we used to call stunt casting. And that was when uh, when the ratings period would, you want to get the best ratings you can. So you would take whatever your regular shows were that let's say aired at uh, Thursday night at eight, you would do something special for those episodes that were going to play during the month of November when, when the ratings period was. And oftentimes what you would do for a regular Thursday night show, let's say, is you would bring in a star. You would do something that was different, that you could call it special. And this week we're going to have so-and-so. Or they would, or they would even surprise a secret people. Or yeah. surprise them. Yeah. So stunt casting has been around as long, at least in television, as long as there have been ratings for television. My question for you is, have they ever done stunt casting in movies, which really, really don't have this kind of thing? You don't see a movie on a regular basis. There's no reason to change it up. But, but movies often have special guest stars. I don't know how to put it. Yeah, they put them in scenes, like individual scenes. They, they show up in a scene and then they don't, you never see them again. And you wonder, what the heck was that all about? Like, it, and it's usually, it started as musical interludes where they would bring some of the big band artists like Tommy Dorsey or Glenn Miller oh, or Benny Goodman. And then yes. they, would, they, would play a, they would play a tune and then you wouldn't see it. One of the earliest that I can remember was from a great movie with Barbara Stanwyck and uh, uh, Gary Cooper called Ball of Fire. Howard Hawks directed, and right in the in the beginning of the movie, uh, 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 um, uh, Gary Cooper meets Barbara Stanwyck at a nightclub, and guess who's playing the Gene Krupa Orchestra? So there's Gene Krupa out of the blue, and then of course you never right. see him again. So they did that with uh, with uh, a lot of the big band artists, and they did that unfortunately with a lot of the uh, African American talent who uh, unfortunately never had the opportunity to star in their own movies outright, or at least seldom had the opportunity. And so you'd get a magnificent talent like Lena Horne, and right. she would come out uh, and, and perform, and then you wouldn't see Lena Horne again. Now, uh, there right. were other artists that would do that, the Andrews sisters and, and the like, but it, it was very unfortunate that that was the case, uh, that they would do that. Um, yeah. For, for for people of color. Now, uh, it, one of the most uh, famous, of course, was the scene, the, the dream sequence in An American in Paris with Gene Kelly, when all of a sudden he's paired with uh, a, a fantasy individual, and that, that fantasy, anybody's fantasy, if you were a, a young and watching this movie, was, of course, the beautiful Sid Charisse. So that that was uh, that was the early incarnation of what you call the stunt casting concept. Now, later on, uh, I think we've had this conversation before where John Wayne would use uh, folks that were not technically actors. They were, in fact, uh, uh, singers, crooners of sorts. And he would uh, introduce them into his movies. And he it became a it, it actually became a, a kind of his uh, a trademark where he would bring in, let's say, Ricky Nelson in, in uh, Rio Bravo or Frankie Avalon in uh, uh, The Alamo. North Alaska featured Fabian and, of course, uh, Glenn Campbell in True Grit. So you would, all, you would have these artists who were not technically actors and they were stunt cast right into the... Uh, Right into the film, and of course you had your sure. traditional stunt workers too. I mean, you you, you know the, who who worked very very hard and diligent. We don't want to disparage the concept that there were real stunt performers as well. So. Right, but we're we're talking what we're talking about is the the stunt here is the programming stunt to attract a different audience. So if you're a John Wayne movie, 
you don't necessarily attract the teenagers that Ricky Nelson is going to bring in until you put Ricky Nelson in the film with John Wayne. Or so th- that's, the, yeah. that's the stunt. That's the gimmick. Uh, and you know, it's hard to attract a different the, audience. There, there was a movie that technically wasn't a John Wayne movie, although John appeared and that the Duke was in The Longest Day. And coincidentally, if you look at this great, great World War II epic about the landing of D-Day, all of a sudden you realize that joining uh, those uh, brave soldiers on, on, on June 6th, 1944, included at least cinematically uh, Paul Anka, Tommy Sands. Yeah. <laughs> but Red, Red Buttons was yeah. the, one of those, right? Right, but he was a, he was truly an actor. He was already an Academy Award winning actor, but there was Fabian. I mean, really? And they get some of the younger stars too, like at the time, a very young George Siegel or a very young Robert Wagner. So, um, and, and a very young Jeffrey Hunter. So these were, you know, but 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 it's odd, it's odd to see a singer in in a role such right. as 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 this. So you obviously know that it's done as a it's it's kind of a it's gimmick casting, uh, and of course. A lot of movies uh, that were considered epics would feature, you know, what we call cameo appearances, which is which is a form of stunt casting. The first of which was Around the World in 80 Days, but then it evolved into some wonderful films, including How the West Was Won, and It's a Mad, 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 Mad World, which, by the way, featured Jack Benny and also featured Jerry Lewis, and they were not received any kind of credit that they even appeared in the film. Right. Mm. I right. also so think that, I remember that a lot of casting. a lot of the beach movies. Uh, it seems to me always had particularly uh, a, like a musical guest uh, who was promoting yes. themselves. Yes. Bo- the Bobby Fuller Four would appear all of a sudden. But that 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 whole tradition comes out of those movies from the '40s where they would bring in the the swing era. Now you're going to bring in some of the rock and roll talent like Leslie Gore. Or, or maybe the Shangri Las. Definitely, yeah. I remember the Bobby Fuller Four. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and and they would, and not only would they appear in films, but they were also starting to appear in movies or, or tell. I'm sorry, television, uh, television like Perry Mason. All of a sudden, you'd have like a, a little musical interlude in the middle of of uh, of, uh, of, a, of a Perry Mason. Now, one of the worst interludes that I ever saw, although it's it's a it's a funny film and I love it, was. Uh, was that film What's Up Tiger Lily, which was a Japanese import that Woody Allen took over and, and, and dubbed, redubbed in a very comical way. Well, all of a sudden, in the middle of the action, he would throw in the loving spoonful for, yeah. <laughs> for, a, for a song or two, and then he'd get yeah. back to the action. Now, they, 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 they weren't any part, there was no, none of the stars were in it. It was just the loving spoonful singing. Yeah. <laughs> and bikini yeah. clad women. It made no sense. <laughs> oh yeah, that was stun casting at its worst. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, <laughs> what a great. Uh, uh, John's uh, picture is fading in and out. We can't hear his uh, music, but so I think unless we get John back real quick, uh, I can who, say bye bye. You can right say bye bye. And who <laughs> who knew that there was so much to say about stunt casting? Well, yes. let's just say that John was part of our stunt casting crew today, and now it's time for him to go as we conclude. Yeah, but, but... my video is fading. This is a this is a great opportunity to say goodbye. Bye. Okay. See ya. <laughs> for more on celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage. Follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.